Hi all, this is Emily from the library and I've put together this video today to show you some of the ways you can access resources from the library while you are working remotely and how to deal with some of the issues you may run into when accessing materials. I first want to reiterate that the library is closed and we cannot provide physical access to materials. I know this is frustrating and we appreciate your patience as we do what we can to provide as much digital access as possible. With this digital access, there will inevitably be problems you run into. This is to be expected, um, and unfortunately that's just a fact of things, but you should know we are always here and happy to help, and hopefully this video will help you solve many of the issues um, you may find. A key thing I want to show you to get started is on the library homepage here, you will see that in this important news box there's many ways to contact us. One, you can chat with a librarian from 9 to 9 any day of the week, including the weekends. This can be long or short conversations. You can also contact us via email if you don't have time to chat. You can call us and you can email us individually. And everything I talk about today can also be found on this remote access to Penrose Library or Penrose Resources page, where you will again find our contact information and information that I talk about today. So let's start with um, what you need to do if you want to access materials in the library. There are still ways we can help with this. So first we're going to do a quick search in Sherlock, my Orlando search. And a key thing to always keep an eye out for is if you're logged in to Sherlock. And this is going to be what allows you to get access to ebooks or to articles. So you click the sign in. Now we'll go down here to a print book. And when you click on the book, you'll see here in the get it tab, you can request a chapter in PDF. So this is going to take you to an interlibrary loan request page. Now, if you hadn't used interlibrary loan before, the first time you click into something like this, you may be prompted to put in some personal information. This will just be kind of contact information and how you want to be contacted, but then you'll get taken to this page and here, the um, Sherlock should put in most of the information you need. The two areas to pay attention to though are chapter title, which is required, so you have to fill something in here. Now you can say chapter two, pages 20 to 30, whatever it is you need. If you don't know, that's a great reason to get in contact with us to help you figure out what may be useful, but you can also put in TOC for um, table of contents or the index, and then we can scan those so that you can make a more informed request. The other thing to pay attention to is this not wanted after date. Now, if your paper's due in a week, you probably don't want to put a date out months in advance when you wouldn't even need the, paper, the resource anymore. On the other hand, if you have a few, if you have some time before the paper's due, you can put in a date a little bit farther in advance so that we have more time to look for it if we're having a hard time finding a place that can give us access. So you'll submit that request. And um, we can't give a specific date um, amount of time that it'll take us to get it because of staffing both at our library and at libraries around the world. Um, for these ones where it's internal, it should just be a day or two, um, but it might be a little bit longer for those other requests. So still not a ton of time, but um, do give yourself some time with these requests. Now let's talk about finding digital sources. So Sherlock is a great place for finding eBooks and articles, but you may also want to use databases. So first, place to look for databases is databases A to Z. Now, like Sherlock and logging in, it's best to go to databases through um, the library website rather than like Googling the database name that you know. That's because we use something called proxies, which allow us to basically treat it as if you were on the campus Wi-Fi so that you don't have to have a special login or something. So here you'll see a complete list. The other place to look for these are our library guides that you'll see over here. So I'm gonna open this in another tab actually, and close this one. And here you'll see there's some general guides that may be of some use to you, but you'll also see that there's subject guides for each major where we've coalesced all the different materials we have that may be useful for you. Um, and that is a good place to start if you're just not sure where to get started looking. Let's see if I can say start five more times. Okay. so. When you're in a database, um, something that you may see 
find yourself looking at is a page like this where it's saying you're not authenticated, it's maybe asking you for payment, um, it, you can't get into the article. This is often the case when you're using Google Scholar or some off-campus, um, though it can also happen from the library, truth be told. If you see anything like this or anything asking you to pay, please never pay for the article. We can get you access. The first thing to look for is any indication that you're connected to Whitman. So here you'll see there's no indication. Now, the same article I went through um, searching the title in an article search in Sherlock, and here you can see that it says access provided by Whitman College. Sometimes you'll see the Whitman logo or something else that indicates that it's connected to Whitman. So that's always a good clue. So here you can download and save the article. So that's great. So remembering that when you don't see anything, try going through the database list or searching in Sherlock with this articles tab. Now, of course, sometimes we're not actually gonna have access to something. So it's not worth worrying too much about whether or not we do. You can do some quick searches. Otherwise, please always, like I said, feel free to contact us and we can figure out a way to get access. One thing you can do is under quick check here on the library page, you'll see interlibrary loan. You'll be very familiar with this page by the end of the semester. And you can put in a request by hand here. You see article, book, chapter. We aren't able to get physical books from other schools, but we can get other chapters scanned from schools. So like we can scan our own books, we can get scans from other schools. Often also in databases, you'll be sent to a Sherlock page when you click check full text or something. And here it'll show you, we don't actually have access to something, but again, the trusty ILL page, you can request the article and in here it'll have filled out the information. And again, keeping track of that not wanted after date. So these are just some of the quick ways to access some of our materials um, in the library. And again, I can't say it enough, we want to help you as much as we can. Please never feel like your question is too small or inconvenient for us. We're always happy to help. So I uh, hope to hear from you and I hope you all are safe and well. Goodbye.